This is the first part of a new series I'm working on where I build um, RuneScape environments in The Sims 4. This is actually Alcarid Palace and you can see a reference image from the actual game here. Um, it's not perfectly recreated because it's actually hard to like find all the stuff that I need in The Sims 4 because obviously a lot of the stuff that's in the original builds isn't in it so I've taken a lot of liberties with it and um, actually at one point later in the video you'll see that I use like <laughs> a purple um, purple curtains instead of like flags because there's nothing similar to that. I do know there's a bunch of stuff in some of the expansion packs um, that would have been useful to use but I don't have most of those so I'm just working with you know the, the packs the couple of packs I have in the base game. Um, I know there's like a wooden roof texture I think that came in one of the packs. Um, I can't I'm not sure which one and um, like, I can't remember what one now, but like there's a wooden roof texture and that would have been really good for the skylight that's on top of the palace. Um, creating that was actually probably the most interesting part of the build, um, actually. It was quite difficult to do and I followed a tutorial actually that um, I will include in the description because it's pretty interesting and I'll probably like use it for future builds if I decide to do something similar. And then, yeah, so, like, there are lots of flags and other bits and pieces that um, just aren't really in the game. So I did use a bunch of debug and live edit objects to, like, try and recreate some parts. Because there are a few things that could sort of stand in for other stuff. Like, the flags on top of the towers in Alcarid Palace. There's nothing equivalent to that that's actually in The Sims 4. So I basically just used the golf um, debug object that's like I guess part of the background of some worlds. There's probably a golf course or something which is why that exists. So I put them on top of the towers so there would be flags. They're actually blue in the reference image but I just made them red. I actually like, um, I did have like some pictures, images I took from Google Images and some screenshots I took but there's just so many like so many details that I had to be constantly looking so I kept having to minimize The Sims 4 and so this video ended up being separated into so many parts and I had to like it took a while to edit them all together and um it also took a while to build not as long as my pool mansion but still pretty long so this video is actually like an hour and a half um like it's like I think it's an hour and 26 minutes the speed build element of it but I haven't actually done like the fly through that I want to include at the beginning yet as I'm recording this audio so um so there's going to be even more and yeah so it's it was a, it's a really long video so I won't be talking the entire time I've, I've said that like the last two videos and then just ended up talking but I think this one is just a bit too long so I'll probably like stop in a minute and include some music um and I've also forgotten what I was talking about <laughs> which is really bad. I wanted to like address some of the highlights of the build in the audio um, because there were a bunch of interesting parts to like, it required a lot of creative like solutions because there were so many things in the build that I tried to recreate that just aren't really possible. One of them was bunk beds actually because I was going on about that in my previous video, um, the Paralytes one. <laughs> I think I was talking about how great it is that there's bunk beds. But yeah, um, there are no bunk beds. In the Sims 4. Um, so what I had to do was I just kind of moved, used the move objects cheat to move the bed up. Um, the bottom bunks are functional because I wanted to have some functional beds in it but the um, top bunk obviously isn't functional so you can't use those. Um, I have play tested the lot so everything that's here is functional except the large throne that, that I put in the throne room later in the video. That is not because it's like an enlarged chair and I don't think enlarged objects, um, most of them anyway, I don't think they ever really work. They always just bring up like some error message. I did move the chair as well so it was the size that was the factor in it not working. Which is interesting because I've never had like a giant chair um, in the game before so I didn't know how that would happen but yeah, sims don't want to <laughs> sit on giant chairs, go figure. Um, so yeah, this is the first time I actually sort of messed around with the terrain tools and increased the size. Like I haven't really done that much in other lots, I usually just make everything flat. And I do landscaping but I don't like mess around. But if you actually look at the reference image there are like 
multiple levels and then the palace is built on top of it so i tried to recreate that it's not as neat as in the runescape like well the alcarid palace there is like the um the layers are like perfectly sort of neat looking but i think it's actually better in a way in in the sims 4 because it looks more natural like the way it sort of gradually slopes up um and later i added a bunch of cactuses and desert plants around um because the and like rocks because there are a few in the actual in the runescape image but no yeah i remembered what i was talking about before earlier in the video yeah i kept having to like minimize <laughs> the video to record it and so i was like logging in because you you log out of runescape automatically after like a few minutes so to like look at different parts of the palace um the weren't available on google images or that i couldn't be bothered to like take a screenshot of because i didn't want to have at one point i had like eight paint files open with a different screenshot in all of them that was just annoying and i don't run the sims in windows mode either so like you have to constantly alt tab out which is it so that it ended up being less annoying to just go into runescape but then i would get like logged out <laughs> every five minutes so i would so yeah so like I'd, there wasn't really anyone around but it would have looked really weird <laughs> like what is this person doing they're just like logging in and going back to like the palace and also because like i was running around a lot of random areas like not talking to the npcs or anything just like running around the top of the palace into random rooms to like get a look at what it looks like and um yeah <laughs> that must have been really interesting looking for anyone but there wasn't really anyone around in the world um to see that but it would have looked pretty funny and then another thing is there are two pool areas um there are either pools or fountains i made them pools in my build because um pools are just more fun and also the fountain tool doesn't seem to work on raised platforms i don't know why but i couldn't get it to to go anywhere i wanted it it seems like you can only put fountains on the ground i don't know if that's actually the case but i couldn't get it to work so yeah the pool in like i tried to get it the same number of squares like i was comparing the grid in the sims to runescape but i ended up with it being a little bit out so it's not exactly the same and my build actually comes out further than it does in the game which is a little annoying and created some problems like some areas just seem a bit too long but yeah because i couldn't i really wanted the stairs to go up the whole way and the problem i was having was like if i moved them um if i moved the whole thing further back that wouldn't work and also the lot size isn't endless so because the palace takes up a lot of space that was a problem but in the end i think my throne room area actually ended up looking too big it just seemed gigantic so i probably could have gotten away with making that a bit smaller because there's so much empty space in it and um yeah there are a bunch of like sort of palm leaf golden like me metallic palm leaf decorations around the runescape palace and because there's nothing equivalent in the sims 4 i basically ended up using the debug broom options so later on you can see a bunch of like gemstone brooms <laughs> which are like like orange gemstone brooms dotted around it's a very weird replacement but yeah I, I kind of just had to work with what i had so on the upstairs level because there are like three levels and that's another thing you can only have four floors in the sims so one of the towers isn't like as tall as it is in runescape it doesn't have as many parts to it which is a shame because that could have looked a lot cooler but because i had the other levels it just i couldn't add any more to it so i couldn't add like the little bars around um in between the roof and the tower part that are in the actual image um and in, in the runescape game and then there's like a sort of treasure room above the throne room in the game and basically um there are a bunch of like hanging drapes and that i couldn't recreate either so i was thinking about what i could sort of do to create a similar effect and in the end i just ended up putting a bunch of red colored curtains around um there is a pool on the first floor and that became a problem which i didn't think of straight away but of course when you make a pool it has to create a room underneath the pool 
which is so annoying. Um, I guess it's realistic, probably, but it's very annoying. Because <laughs> I mean, they, the pool needs to go somewhere, right? Because they need to swim in it, so it, it does need to go somewhere. But of course, in RuneScape, it doesn't go anywhere. There's no, <laughs> there's no square underneath the pool. The pool is just flat and on the first floor. So there's a room underneath the pool in RuneScape, and um, there's a bunch of stuff in it, and like. I couldn't really, like, I, I was already into the build when that occurred to me, so I couldn't, like, sort of build around the pool and such. So I just made the pool as thin as I could get away with while it's still looking similar to the image. And then just had to sort of, like, just work around it. Like, I put the beds in front of it. Um, but it killed, like, two to three squares of the room off, and it's not exactly the same shape because of that. So, yeah, you'll see that later in the in the video, though. Um, that became a whole situation that was annoying and I was thinking about like just moving everything back but by that point it was just too annoying because I was too far into the build by that point um, it was the aside from that I would say that area was the easiest to recreate because I could recreate the stairs pretty much in exactly the same shape I guess I wouldn't have been able to before the um, before they patched in the stair adjustment so that's one use <laughs> the stair adjustments that I found because um, of course uh, at some point you could only have straight stairs I think um, but then they they updated it so you could move it around um, I included a bunch of like concrete debug slab things around because there are a bunch of slabs in the original image that seem kind of 3D um, but then I noticed that for some reason there is collision on the slab despite it being essentially flat which is just so annoying because there's a lot of other, there are other stuff in the game that's almost flat that doesn't have collision like that like sims can walk over small steps and stuff without needing stairs but um but that had collision so i had to move a bunch of them later in the video um i think i ended up doing this in the video but there's a possibility that this was off i think because this was when i was play testing that won't be in the speed bill, but basically all, most of the concrete slabs I had to remove later on because the sims would just like refuse to move and I was when I was testing the bed because I thought the bed might be a problem the bed that's the upstairs bed not the bed the bunk beds there's an upstairs bed and I was testing it because I, I put a little wall around it and I knew there was a possibility that that wouldn't work um, but no, in the end, the bed was fine. The problem was the concrete slab, and it took me quite a while to figure out, like, why isn't the sim going to the beds? Even I even removed like the wall, the the half wall from in front of the bed, and then I was like, no, that it should be working now. Is the door the problem? But the door wasn't the problem. It was the concrete slabs in front of the door. So even though they look flat, they have a whole problem. So I had to get rid of them. Um, what else? about this build yeah um <laughs> there's one point very i'm talking mostly about stuff that happened later in the build but there's one point where in one of the bedrooms on the ground floor i guess they're like barracks really for the guards um in one of them there's like a little cactus plant in the corner and i ended up putting a plant a pod there and then resizing a cactus to put it in to try and recreate that effect the actual type of cactus plant that it is there is no equivalent of in the game, I don't think, but I did have one in mod form, which was kind of annoying because I wanted to do this without mods, but I did have like the exact plan in mod form, so that was that was a pain. Um, it's probably better that I to do this out of order, to be honest, because often my audio ends up out of sync anyway, so it's like, if it's not in order anyway, it doesn't matter, but you'll see it eventually. But yeah, the cactus plan, I was kind of like recreating that, and then I realised that there was basically a cactus, because I knew there was, I just couldn't remember, like, where it was, and I was looking for it, and I, I couldn't find it at first, like, the cactus plant, so I ended up recreating it, and then I found it, and I was like, oh, yeah, of course, because I added that cactus plant to another build I did, so then I ended up deleting the planter with the little cactus, and putting in the ready-made cactus plant, because that just makes more sense. Um... I made like one of the wardrobes a lot bigger than it actually is and I used like the resizing tools a lot for stuff to try and create a similar scale. There's just 
so much stuff like trying to I tried to create it according to like a similar grid pattern but things just seem so much more empty in The Sims 4 than they do in RuneScape because it's like the grid is a lot bigger I think and just the throne room was ginormous and there is so much empty space in it. This building is essentially it's not livable it's not like it's not designed for sims to live in or anything it's not really playable from that point of view it really is just like an attempt to recreate the visual of the palace in runescape um these are actually spiral stairs there are no spiral stairs in the sims 4 which i still miss i missed them from the sims 3 um i think they had them in the sims 3 and the sims 2 they definitely had them in one of the previous games but there are no spiral stairs, so I just used the ladder tool. And to be honest, from the top of the palace, um, it looks more like a kind of hatch for a ladder anyway. It's odd that it's a spiral staircase, because you look at it and the stairs come up out of a kind of hatch, like a ladder would. But then underneath it's a spiral staircase. So really it makes less sense in RuneScape than it does in The Sims. Um, for a while in the bedroom, in like the master bedroom, um, there are like these large fat kind of columns and all of the columns in The Sims 4 are very skinny so for a while I sort of resized these like urns to use instead because it was a sort of similar shape but they were clipping through the wall and it just, I don't know, it looked too um, wrong. I don't mind using stuff in a way that it's not intended like this, in a kind of hacky way, but that was just... It required too much suspension of disbelief and looked completely wrong, so I ended up getting rid of it and just putting in normal pillars um, and just ignoring the shape. And then I put a punch bunch in the throne room as well, but in the RuneScape throne room, there are actually a bunch of those large pillars um, going across the carpeted area in the middle. Like, there are a bunch in a kind of row going up to the throne, and I, I actually forgot to do anything equivalent to that. Not sure I could have done... I think I, I probably could have done. I think you could put the pillars anywhere. Um, as long as it's according to the grid. I don't think you have to put them against walls. But, yeah, I don't think it would have looked good, because they're very skinny, and the ones in the RuneScape game are very fat, so I just left that area kind of there. But that's another reason it looks more empty. Then there are a bunch of bird cages and things like that, and I didn't try to recreate that because there are, there just is nothing in the game that's like that. Maybe there are in the pets one, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they added smaller pets, to be honest, to the cats and dogs stuff packs. Um, there's also like a parrot in the frame room, and again, there was nothing I could really put that was equivalent to that. There are a bunch of pillows dotted around, and I basically just resized... Um, I do have some pillow mods, but again, I wasn't wanting to use mods, so what I did was just resize like a bunch of like um, what's the word for them? The little chair things, the like the little bench. Hang on a sec. Okay, so I still don't know what the object is called because the. Origin is requiring me to update my game to get it to get in and it's just it's too much effort at this point but I resized some surfaces um, and I used them as pillows you'll see later in the game and later in the video what I did yeah it's like it's still on it's, it's just up it's just finished updating it was like taking for ages and it, cra it crashed like three times. I clicked to download the pack and it just closed randomly like three times before it would start doing it. This is so annoying. Like I shouldn't have to patch, like up, up, I shouldn't have to install and download updates to play the game. This wouldn't happen if I wasn't connected to the internet right now either. It's just very intrusive and annoying and I definitely do not like that element of The Sims 4. It should not require you to do that in order to play the game it just shouldn't it's not an online game i mean i know they intended it to be i guess when they were developing it there's a lot of clues in the game that suggest it was supposed to be online but they changed their mind at the last minute but it's not an online game and i've heard like rumors about development of the next sims game going to be online 
which doesn't interest me much to be honest I just I don't know that it needs to be and this is just very irritating that it requires that so so yeah it, ha it has actually finished now so I suppose I could load it but probably not going to it's because the um the new Star Wars pack is coming out soon so that's why I think they're doing this update at the moment it's probably related to that but yeah I watched a review actually um on someone's YouTube channel for the new the new Star Wars pack because they got an early access copy and um it was pretty much what I what I was thinking like <laughs> when I watched it before it's not the gameplay isn't really great but it looks cool but the gameplay isn't great um I think it's somewhat comparable to Realm of Magic in some ways as well where you have like a bunch of sort of rabbit hole buildings and stuff but there's not a lot going on there I was actually going to upload a like kind of review of Realm of Magic even though it's like it came out ages ago but I didn't really like the audio I did for it so I scrapped that video but yeah um one thing I noticed while playing through all the Realm of Magic content because I haven't hadn't actually gotten around to playing all of it only a few things um the Glimmerbrook world and a bunch of other stuff is just it's um it looks really cool but there's a lot a lot of stuff you can interact with in the environment which is just so it's like yeah it's kind of annoying because it's like there's a lot of potential there and it looks really cool but there's not so much you can interact with um and yeah realm of magic did kind of make me miss the sims 3 supernatural as well because it's a much bigger it's like an expansion pack not a game pack they split a lot of the supernatural stuff for the sims 4 into multiple packs so they've got the vampire pack and the, the magic pack but yeah the sims 3 supernatural had like a bunch of cool stuff all included in one thing so I think I did, I did like that one a lot better. Um, but I have spoken about this before. But yeah, that's kind of what it reminded me of a bit, like, because there's all the buildings that you can't actually go into properly. There was one that you can go into, but um, yeah. So I don't, I don't think I'll actually be buying that pack. Well, I don't have most of them, so... But yeah, that definitely wouldn't be on the top of my list of packs to buy, so, um, and I'm not, like, the biggest Star Wars fan either, I do like Star Wars, um, and the new movies were visually very interesting, but, you know, I wasn't, like, completely, the writing and the plot, there's a lot of plot elements that just don't really make sense, so I wasn't the hugest fan of the new films. And I'm not in general a super fan of Star Wars. I've seen all of the films at some point in time. But yeah, so there's no... And I think even if you were a big fan of Star Wars, this pack would probably be disappointing, to be honest. But, you know, obviously I haven't played it. But that was just based on the review that I watched. Um, it had some video clips in it as well. I think it was on Plumbella's channel, so yeah. So like I'll just say I think yeah it was on Plumbella's channel so I'll just like maybe I'll include a link to that in the description in case anyone is actually listening to this audio and wants to look at that review but yeah um god I don't know when to really stop this because it's kind of like it's been about 23 minutes um and yeah it's kind of weird to just have it cut off and go into music, but at the same time, I'm definitely not going to be sitting here talking for an hour and two minutes because I've already sort of run out of stuff to talk about, and I'm talking about stuff from my previous videos and such. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything relevant to the build that I that is particularly interesting that I've forgotten, and there probably is, but I won't remember it until I see it in the video. Um, and I have talked about it a lot. There's a whole bunch of like, there are wall patterns in the RuneScape build on the sides of the building and there's nothing similar to it 
in any of the wallpapers in Sims 4. So for a while I was using these little like fake window archways that you have in decoration mode, but they just come out too much and they're too thick. They're not remotely flat and it just looked weird. And in the end I was like, mm, no, they don't, they don't look quite right. So I got rid of them. I'm also not entirely happy. Like the building is very orangey looking, um, like quite plain and brown because there just isn't a whole lot of walls for this kind of colour scheme and design. I mean, there's just... So many of the outdoor textures are brick, or like, I don't know, like, corrugated material and stuff like that. Um, none of it's really, there isn't like a huge range of stone options, and um, there's something about it that looks quite fake and not very realistic, which I'm not entirely keen on, but um, I think I did change maybe some of them to a lighter shade later, but... Not all of it, but some of them I can't really remember. But yeah, there weren't there weren't like a lot of options for the um, wall textures and such. I also changed like some of the fences a bunch of times, and there are a lot of like little details that I feel um, they seem so familiar to me, and I feel like they were they were in previous Sims games, but not in this one. Like there are some sort of air vents. Um, that are in a more, in in this kind of style, instead of just the metal air vents that you have in The Sims 4. And there are like, various railings and stuff, and um, just parts of like the building, like along the top. I don't know the names of certain things, so I'm like, just, yeah. There are, there are bits and pieces though, on parts of the build that I think like similar stuff was available in previous Sims games but they are not in this game which is kind of annoying so I just had to make do and like I put a bunch of like fence sort of like fancy small fence around the top to try and recreate some of the bits but it's not at all like what was actually in the original um, RuneScape Palace. And then inside I'd use like, I resized some giant like, I resized like the sun so it was giant and put that in a bunch of places like the wall decoration sun. Um, that was supposed to be something else entirely I think in, in the actual um, palace and then I resized like, I used some decals on top of rugs to try and create a similar effect to some of the rugs that were in the original palace but yeah no it was like difficult to um to make it seem i think it's like vaguely recognizable in the end but it's not it doesn't look exactly like it and they're like there's not a lot of- I put like tons of urns around because in the actual palace there are like a bunch of like um pots and stuff that are sitting around. Some of them have plants and some of them don't. So I put plants around and I put like a bunch of urns and resized them. So it would seem like there were like collections of urns. It didn't end up looking exactly right but it was the closest thing I could probably do. Later on I discovered actual like a, a gold coloured urn in the debug thing and I put some of those around as well um, as a stand-in for like some little metal pots that are on some shelves. So yeah I did a bunch of stuff like that and uh, but no I've been like playing RuneScape a bunch so I sort of thought huh what if I like recreate some stuff. This was a really hard one to start with so I don't know why I did because I was going to like there are definitely some, some other environments that have more content in The Sims 4 that could have probably worked better. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Another one I really wanted to do was the Wizard Tower, especially in RuneScape 3. It looks really cool with the updated visuals. Like, it's come a long way over the years. But I uh, don't know if I'll be able to do that, because that's another one that's going to be very complicated to do in The Sims 4 in terms of, like, the wall textures and stuff and just other bits and pieces. I don't know. But I might have a go and see. Um, but that one would take quite a while as well. So I don't think I'm going to do that next. 
um, I would be interested in doing like one of the smaller villages or like Draenor maybe or Port Sarum. There are a bunch of boats in that one but I know that there are a bunch of boats in the debug options so it could be possible. They won't be the exact same kind of boats but I could possibly do that. So I might do that next. Um, but yeah. I like, when I was looking on YouTube, I noticed only one person had done that and I thought that was interesting because I like a bunch of builds from other TV programs and films and games and stuff, um, but I didn't notice any for that particularly. I don't know if there's a lot of crossover appeal between people who play The Sims and RuneScape, there probably isn't, so there was only like one video I saw that was like Varrock Palace that someone had recreated and that was interesting. Um, no, not Varrock. Lumbridge. But yeah, there were, there are more on the gallery. I noticed that when I was looking. Like, there are a bunch of RuneScape builds on the gallery. But, um, there aren't many on YouTube, so I decided to do this. But yeah, I mean, it's not, <laughs> it's not very practical. It really is just for show. And, um, I suppose, like, I will put it on the gallery, but basically, I suppose it's like an okay shell for something, maybe? Like, you could just modify it and turn it into anything. Um, like your own little kind of castle, desert castle thing. But, uh, there's no kitchen, there's no bathroom. Because <laughs> there isn't in the in RuneScape, I don't, in most games, the people don't go to the loo and they rarely cook, <laughs> so. It's actually weird that there isn't a kitchen, though, because there is a kitchen in most or most runescape, like large houses and castles and stuff, they'll have a kitchen. Like the Lumbridge one has a has a kitchen, but Alcarid Palace doesn't, as far as I I didn't notice it anyway. I don't think it does. So um, yeah. So there's nothing like like there's like basic stuff that just isn't here. So it's not a functional build, but you can sort of add to it, I guess. Um, if you do download it. Okay, so actually my voice record, my mic is running out of batteries because it uses AA batteries, which is kind of old school, but it's actually a fairly modern microphone, but it, yeah, it doesn't have like an option to plug it in anywhere. So um, I'm actually, I'll probably go now because I'm not going to talk for half an hour anyway, and then I'll just put like some music over the rest of the video. Um, so as I said, you can download this on the gallery, and my ID will be in the description of the video. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Bye guys!
Thank you.